Dear friends, today we will be discussing gender economics and development discourse. Gender economics as an academic discipline is science concerned about women's equality with men and also about development of women. Gender economics provides an analytical tool, a worldview to understand the status of women and as an alternative viewpoint to existing knowledge construction. It is an interdisciplinary perspective. Gender economics emphasizes the need for providing material basis for women's independence, dignity and autonomy. Objectives of gender economics are many, mainly to facilitate the process of understanding, recognizing and giving due importance to the contribution of women and men in the economy, to examine the reasons for subordination of women and for male domination, to empower women to attain gender justice and an effective role in all decision-making bodies of society, of educational institutions, of political structures and economic bodies. To empower women to attain gender justice and effective role in all the areas of governance. To evolve development alternatives with women and ensure visibility of women in statistics and indicators and also as change agents for the enhancement of status of women. To identify and understand roots of inequality that result in invisibility, marginalization, non-recognition of women's contribution and exclusion of women from the intellectual world. And to support social action aimed at equity, equality, development, peace, education, health and employment of women. Now, gender economics is concerned about gender in the process of economic development. The incorporation of subsistence economies into the modern market economies has resulted into a question like where the traditional gender-based division of labor as an organizing principle in both rural and urban sectors have changed and because of the basic injustice it perpetuates women get invisibilized, they get unrewarded. Women end up doing less skill work and are underpaid and are expected to con contribute to survival needs of the family without any corresponding benefits. Uh, German uh, so social scientist Maria Mies has said that now women are the last colony for the capitalist extraction. Esther Bosserup, uh, an economist from Denmark, in her pioneering work brought to the fore African women's crucial contribution towards food security and explain the political economy of polygamy in Africa that allowed man to concentrate and centralize economic resources through unpaid and backbreaking labor of women and children in the subsistence economy that did not have much animal resources for cultivation of land nor did it have a very superior agricultural technology. So it was a sheer human labor. And it is in this context that women and children's labor becomes very, very important in subsistence economy. Now, gender economists have critiqued the conventional indicators of development, such as modernization, green revolution, blue revolution, industrialization, agricultural mechanization, urbanization, automation, in information technology revolution, artificial intelligence and also robotics because all these processes may have contributed to economic growth but they have bypassed women and they have also <coughs> enhanced the gender gap between men and women. There have been three approaches in gender economics. The first important approach that is a women in development and this approach explains the reasons for women being treated as beneficiaries of the crumbs thrown at them in the margin of the economy, mainly as consumer and as an auxiliary labor force to be utilized in the crisis period where there, wherever there is a shortage of male labor and eased out the moment men are ready to take over. The dis this discourse on women in development revolves around economic growth paradigm. It, it uh, acknowledges that women are at the margin, they are at the bottom of the economy and the efforts have to be made by the nation state to incorporate women in the process of development. The second approach is women and development which critiques weed approach because weed appro 
They say that what kind of development in which we want to incorporate women, we, there is a sea ocean of patriarchy. Within that, what kind of justice, economic justice that women are going to get? So it is important that the, the, we, we need to be self-mobilization of women becomes very, very important in this approach and development work of women, collective endeavor of women as active agent of change and also affirmative action by the state. They become very important uh, for in, in this approach. Uh, in fact, there are organizations like Self-Employed Women's Organization in Ahmedabad, in India now, uh, started from Ahmedabad or Working Women's Forum in Chennai, or Dastakar. Uh, these are some of the important uh, organizations and models which have emerged out of bad, bad approach. NGOs and voluntary organizations implementing this approach have become powerful force uh, since 1990s. The third approach which emerged after Nairobi forward-looking strategy in 1985 was a GAD approach. Here, the focus is not just on women and patriarchy. It is the approach is on, focus is on gender, gender as a power relation between man and women, subordination, domination relationship. And you, the gender and development approach is based on understanding that gender relations and, uh, are socially constructed. They can be changed through affirmative action, through mobilization of women, to collective endeavor, to very, uh, as a result of progressive legislations and uh, aff uh, affirmative actions by the state. Now, in gender and development approach, we, uh, the state intervention has to be for empowerment of the weak. Gender relations are determined by complex interplay of power relations based on caste, class, ethnicity, race, religion and location and they need to be addressed. Now, gender economics focuses on economic basis and functioning of patriarchy and, uh, and also uh, understanding of the matrilineal society structures and system. Uh, patriarchy thrives on control over women's sexuality, fertility and labor for male hegemony over economic resources. Analytical tools provided by gender economics are extremely useful to deal with socio-economic and legal issues concerning marriage, divorce, custody of child, guardianship rights, alimony, maintenance, property rights of mothers, sisters, daughters, legally wedded wives and her child and children, co-wives and their children, and keeps and their children, and also issues concerning adoption, contribution of women in the care economy to the gross domestic product of the country. Now, it's very important to understand that there are so the, the gender economics deals with uh, education, health and development of this uh, and within that also it has to provide perspective on agriculture, water resources for the rural women, poverty eradication and economic empowerment, employment and labor, uh, the, the uh, use of the natural resources, uh, health and reproductive health of women, gender and HIV AIDS, political participation in the decision-making bodies, security, peace and conflict, how they impact the economic behavior, infrastructure, both physical and social infrastructure, physical infrastructure in terms of connectivity, roads, communication and also social infrastructure in terms of public health, public education and also the question of trade, commerce and industry, what are the women's predicament in the way these sectors develop, physical and social services such as energy, transportation, housing, legal and human uh, rights issues and also international partnership for development and culture, family, socialization, kinship network, gender-based violence. So in, in a way, gender economics touches all aspects of male-female relationship uh, from womb to tomb. So whole life cycle has been touched by gender economics. Gender economics has a special significance in the subsistence economy which uses the kinship networks, institution of polygamy, polyandry for concentration and centralization of wealth and capital by either the patriarchs or the matriarchs. Domestic animals, women, children are the main assets in the subsistence sector where collection of fuel, fodder, water, livestock raising, kitchen gardening, they become the important component of daily life 
over and above agrarian chores, livestock rearing and also uh, other agriculture related activities. It helps to identify affirmative actions that the state can take to create gender friendly ecosystem for livelihood of the households at the margin of the economy in rural and urban areas. When it comes to market mobility and women, we need to acknowledge that the globalization induced mobility of women has posed new problems for women in the labor market. Economic profile of special needs population needs to be uh, discussed. Analysis of nature of the occupational diversification that takes place because of this new kind of information technology and new kind of mechanization, rationalization that has been coming up in manufacturing sector, in agriculture sector, the use of biotechnology that is also changing the face of uh, agriculture. Effects of structural adjustment program and stabilization policies on the market segmentation, on the lives of the people, on the quality of life of the population in the poverty groups. Uh, economic basis of customary laws, like we have 30,000 customary laws in our country. We have a religion based family laws and which deal with very important aspects of human relations such as marriage, divorce, custody of child, uh, property rights, right to stay in a parental home, right to stay in a matrimonial home and also uh, guardianship rights for a mother. Mega development projects such as uh, railways or uh, bullet trains or thermal power plants or dams, irrigation project, they displace people and population habitat in a big way and even in the relocation of policy like project affected people uh, about them, there are a lot of human miseries that are created so many times the compensation is not adequate, sometimes it's only monetary comp compensation, people are unemployed, they lose their fertile land and in this process women are the most neglected people in terms of losing their entitlements. Political economy of dowry, witch killing and widow burning that also needs examination because it's not only a cultural issue, there is a material basis to why they are treated like dowry give, gives a new equation where the dowry plus bride is equal to groom. That means there is an inequality between the bride's side and the groom's side uh, and uh, it has a devastating impact on women and Dr. Indira Rajaraman has also shown that whenever the work participation like we have seen that the development process has resulted into reduction in the work participation of women, women in the uh, employment and that has direct functional relationship with increasing dowry cases of dowry harassment and dowry murders. Even in when uh, while examining the witch killing that is also found that who are the women who, who are why only women are targeted as witches and, uh, and which are the women who are targeted as witches. It is basically single women, widows, divorcee, deserted women and, and the vested interest in their locality. They want to use up their land or houses or whatever little property they have. And th th this is the major reason creating an environment of terror or subjugation and intimidation and, and taking away uh, all the resources that you have. And that's why we see recently around 16 states are reporting, National Crimes Record Bureau is reporting increasing cases of witch killing. Wherever like women empowerment policies are implemented by men decision makers and if they are not sensitive on gender issues, then they come up with uh, totally unrealistic programs and schemes which don't benefit women at all. Another very important concern we have is the gender biases in theories of value theories of distribution and theories of population. Like neoclassical analysis based on law of marginal utility in consumer analysis, marginal cost in product and pricing and marginal productivity, they have come under severe scrutiny by gender economists. In the areas of home economics, Nobel laureate Gary Becker's model of competing interest in distribution of resources in the household and the higher opportunity cost for, of men as a bread earner and women as a homemaker has been criticized by women study scholars as a very sexist and status quoist approach which doesn't challenge uh, patriarchy or uh, patriarchal advantages that men have. Amartya Kumar Sen and Martha Nossbaum have put forward a concept of cooperative conflict in the theory of distribution. A feminist reading of economic laws of say marginal productivity theory or law of maximization 
form the basic tenet of gender economics because law of maximization like a consumer rationality as we are taught in mainstream economics neoclassical economics is that as a consumer you maximize your satisfaction and as a producer you maximize your profit this approach has been severely criticized by gender economists as a very hedonistic approach which doesn't which is not concerned about social justice gender justice or distributive justice feminist economists also believe in engendering micro and macroeconomics